after your first sheep. If you are married, if you're not married, be careful who you marry. That's a big deal. And today who you marry determines the future God has for you. So make sure you've heard God and you're marrying the person who's going to walk into that future with you. So that's for you who are single. But those of us who are married, take care of your wife. Take care of your spouse. We love, and I'm just stating the, the, the realities of ministry, we love to look after the bride of Christ, but we're not very good at looking after our own brides. And I just want to say to us, our own bride, the wives, the, the partners that He's given us, qualify or disqualify us from taking care of His bride. And so I'm, my wife is not my ministry. I know some get offended when I say that. Nicole is not my ministry. My ministry is what God's called me to. But in saying that, God gives me Nicole and I to work together in the ministry we have together. So she doesn't take the place of ministry, but she's called with me to minister and lead God's people and serve the plans of God. So in saying that, how can we minister at that level if we're not connected at this level? So my point being, friends, she needs to be taken care of. And uh, I was saying yesterday, just a random thought here to some of the guys I was meeting with on Zoom. Some of them saying that in the season of lockdown and shutdown, how God's reminded them of the need to work, enjoy life and enjoy their leadership and enjoy their family. And, uh, and one of the biggest challenges we had in our transition was just people were leaving when we took this team on. It was a very painful time of ministry and season. I remember going to my dad, feeling like I'm failing him. Some of the really good guys were unhappy and challenging and I was, felt like I was letting him down in the transition of him handing me this team. We're losing some people and and it was a very vulnerable time for me. I remember going to my dad and saying, Hey, Dad, all these guys are wanting to leave and are disappointed and are fighting me. And, th-. and I remember my dad saying to me, No, Tyron, be free. He said, God has given you your wife and God has given you your children, your sons. And you need to fight for them and only for them. They are the ones who are worth fighting for. And uh, I remember that really liberated me, not to ignore what God's doing and ignore the people out there, but to really come back to what value is important of those he really has entrusted to me and that's my wife and that's my sons for whatever that's worth and i remember preaching that in a in, in a place or mentioning that story and a man took a photo of my wife and my three kids when they were really young on the beach and we were leaving that state flying back to our home and he gave me this huge uh, picture uh frame i mean it's hard to travel he gave it to me at the airport and he said hey I, I made this for you and on the back it says worth fighting for and it was a picture of my wife and my kids and I recently found that picture again and I put it back in my office and it's at the back. It's right there. I see it daily in my office, in my study, worth fighting for. And I, again, I don't want to kind of be sentimental here with you, friend, but I do want to suggest we've got to contend and we need to take care of our spouses and take care of our families and not just get so busy with the, the kingdom stuff that we neglect those guys entrusted to us. Live that. Enjoy them. Work it out. If things aren't well, sort them out. Get help. Uh, if, if you need help, Guys will reach out to you, but let's lead today for tomorrow. And let's raise our children and raise our kids and love our kids and be good parents to them as well as not just good leaders to the church. We're building today for tomorrow. 